also a filmmaker. He's made several documentary films based both out of Northeast as well as Delhi. Uh, we will discuss the issue of from page to screen. The Bangalore Literary Festival, we've had a whole lot of new books launched. I mean, it's uh, literature that is very often the beginning of stories that then are either taken up or adapted for the big screen. I myself have made uh, several films which have been adapted for the big screen. Prominent among them are Train to Pakistan with Kushwan Singh, who was a writer. I'll talk more about it later. Maya Memsa, which was based on Madame Bowari. The film was directed by Ketan Mehta. I was a co-producer on that film. I've done films like Ghare Bhaire, based on Tagore's work, which was Satyajit Ray who directed it. So therefore, we'll talk about the issues and the complications, the problems of taking a book and then moving it to screen. Before we proceed, let me also sort of uh, welcome the two other speakers. Uh, we have with us Raghwendra and uh, we have uh, with us Bhardwaj. Yeah. So, to begin with, it's interesting to know that as far as Hollywood is concerned, 12% of all films coming from Hollywood are based on existing novels or existing literary works. They may be classics or they may be very contemporary works. In India, we really don't have any such data or uh, we really don't have an analysis as to how many uh, films come out of uh, existing novels. But interestingly, even our very first film, Raja Harishchandra, came out of a mythological character. Uh, and uh, as far as Hollywood is concerned, uh, since there is so much of data, what is also interesting to know is that books that have done very well also end up doing very well in the theater. So that means there's a correlation between its performance and existing brand equity and its subsequent adaptation onto the big screen, whether it's a Lord of the Rings or uh, whether it is J.K. Rowling's uh, Harry Potter series or a whole lot of the Shakespeare uh, works and so on and so forth. So therefore, it's almost obvious that if someone was to choose a particular story, one of the possible places that they would look at is literature and see what is it that has worked or which is the book that has been popular. And invariably, books that have been popular have been popular because they have a good storyline and because they have a structure which is great. However, it's not as easy as just taking the book and then converting it into a movie. So that's where I would now invite our panelists this evening to talk about their own experiences and their own viewpoints on what would they look at if they were to take a book. If you were to choose a book, what is it that you would see about the book and to want it to make it into a film? Uh, I think there, is, there are certain books uh, that uh, instantly lend themselves to a, a certain cinema. I mean, like, like that cliche goes, I was reading the book and it was like, you, the visual pictures, you know, the images keep forming in your head. So, you know, that, that thing. But that said, uh, I don't think there are, there are several things here. One is when you mention movies like where properties like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or other things, there is, we don't have the equivalent of those bestsellers here, except for a few like the Amish novels and things like that, which are kind of getting, um, I think they're, they're being made now, and we've had a few Jetan Bhagat uh, books. So it's also a reflection of the popularity of the, uh, of the, of, of the literary medium itself. So I think if, if, a, if a book becomes enough of a popular success, then, you know, a, a, a movie version is kind of, uh, some, some, it does follow a lot of the time. But is the popularity of the book by itself sufficient for it to be? 
Uh, no, no, but but again, uh, I think that that when you're looking at most novels, uh, you know, you you do have a certain structure in it that 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 mirrors a, what uh, because movies are kind of come from uh, literature as well. So uh, you know, they they are. Uh, I think the only thing that people see is whether it is it is going to be box office worthy or not. Uh, but even that question has been trumped now because uh, a book as difficult to adapt for the big scene as Sacred Games is now becoming a, a, a series on Netflix. So when I say difficult, it's not necessarily that, I mean, which is not instantly most, you don't think of it as a very, uh, you know, audience pleasing kind of or, or a very mainstream kind of thing. But, you know, it's being made by, by Netflix. So I, I would think that the books itself, I mean, when you, when I think the cinematic ability, uh, uh, the, 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 that's, pretty much the, the number one thing that, that uh, whether this is going to make a good movie. Sanjay, what would be your views in uh, terms of if you were to choose a book for making a feature film or a film, how would you go about it and what kind of books would you choose and why? Well, I come from the, uh, the other side of the story, shall we say. I'm a writer, I'm a journalist, I write books and uh, I, uh, the first film I actually worked on was with uh, your friend Janu Barua, which was a documentary of, on the Brahmaputra. And it's only now that I'm working on a book on the Brahmaputra now. And what, um, at least in my own limited uh, area, because I work on documentary films, and it's a niche area, I work on the Northeast, I work on issues of conflict and environmental change, so what has happened as far as uh, certainly in my own life is concerned, I have traveled very extensively in the region. And that informs my work, my writing. And out of that, I think, uh, I think of a f an idea for a documentary film, one of the most compelling stories or a series of compelling stories which would, uh, uh, would, would make, make sense to uh, a larger Indian audience. We showed a screening, we had a screening yesterday at BIC um, of the latest film which is on Mizoram. Now, not many people know anything about Mizoram and perhaps the Mizos know about the rest of India uh, far more than we do about them. But I thought it was an important uh, story to document because for the first time in 50 years, the Mises are coming out with their stories. They're, they're telling their stories. So it's not an outsider going in, although I am from the region, and saying that, you know, I want to capture your stories. They're telling the stories themselves. And I think this is very important to give the time. I'm not talking about fiction because I write nonfiction and I work on documentaries. Uh, and I'm, since, you know, Janu, I, I, I'm uh, interested, you know, when I first started, um, I wrote my first script and I went to him. I said, this is the script for the Brahmaputra film. He looked at it and said, Sanjay, people watch a movie. They don't read it. That's, so. that's a very valid point. You know, writing and films are two completely different mediums. When you're writing, you're actually telling a story. But when you're making a film, you're showing something. So therefore, you are virtually addressing different senses. In writing, you're really addressing a lot to the, your intellect. Whereas when you're showing, you're addressing yourself far more to your visual and your sensory, uh, uh, the, you know, other senses. Uh, and you want to make it sort of uh, look and feel far more glamorous and far more happy than actually in reality, a writing might be. Uh, so, Raghavendra, what would be, I mean, what are the issues that you would look at or what are the, you know, strengths that you would look at in a book that would sort of make you believe that, yes, here is a character or here is a story or here is something that I would like to take on and, you know, make this one into a movie rather than write something original for a movie. See, my, my own, my approach is, see, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a critic and a theorist, a kind of film theorist, a film uh, historian. So my approach is more to look at categories in adaptations of cinema, okay? So my, in my view, I mean, if you look at, uh, see, you can't talk about uh, Mahabharata being made into a film as a literary adaptation. The Mahabharata is largely an oral thing, right? 
it, it's, its literature does not translate into, into cinema. Whereas you look at novels, you look at a novel, I think, is the ideal, uh, is the ideal hunting ground for a person who wants to adapt uh, cinema, adapt for cinema. What my sense is of uh, adaptations is there are basically three kinds of adaptations. One is just take the story, right? In the, in, uh, take the story of the novel and make it into a film. I think uh, usually the filmmaker uh, places himself above the material he's adapting. Uh, and uh, see, for example, you take something like Three Idiots, right? Now, Chetan Bhagat wasn't a brand when he, made the, when he wrote that uh, novel on which Three Idiots is based. So they were fairly, they didn't bother to keep the title. Uh, but when he, uh, now he's a, when they made this new one called Half Girlfriend, he's already a big name. So it's adapted in the second way, which is to use the brand, okay? Now, Ian Fleming is a brand, okay? John Grisham is a brand, okay? A lot of these people, um, I think uh, Stephen King is a brand, okay? Chetan Bhagat is a brand. So all these are brands. So that's the second kind of thing where you honor the brand in some way, you take the story. And the point is, that, that is the thing that the, uh, the, uh, the book already has a market. The book has a market. So anything adapted from the book will also have a market. That's the second thing. The third thing is, when the book is, uh, is a kind of reverential, the approach of the filmmaker is reverential in some way. All uh, things of Shakespeare, for instance, most things of Shakespeare are reverential things. They can retain the lines the same. I mean, if you look at uh, uh, Shakespeare, what, are the, what would be the things? of Macbeth, okay, Hamlet, okay, Henry V, all these would be films done in a certain way. Another way of using novels, of classics, is to use uh, the uh, authorial speech as a voiceover. For example, I'll give you an example. I just saw this French movie, very interesting French movie, where the, it's a World War I French movie made in 1965 or so, where it's taken from a Cocteau novel. Cocteau is a very big uh, surrealist writer, and th there's a certain line, okay, of so soldiers, gangrene invaded them like ivy grows upon a statue. Now this is a completely literary thing. You can't put it into cinema, right? At the same time, at the same time, there are elements in this film which are completely cinematic, which wouldn't work in, uh, in, which, which wouldn't work in literature. There is, for instance, a scene where uh, there's a deserted, it's the, the town has been bombed out, it's deserted. Uh, this woman who's a nurse uh, hears the horse's hooves and a horse comes running into this town square, okay? Its mane is on fire. Its mane has caught fire. I can, you can imagine this. Now, you cannot be described, okay? That there's a certain tactile uh, quality of this. So the point is that when you use literary things, when you're uh, reverential towards a literary source, you can actually use in voiceover. For some reason, uh, for some reason, this doesn't see this voiceover of narration doesn't have, hasn't happened in India. Satyajit's adaptations are basically, though they are reverential in the sense they've taken from Tagore and they take from um, Pater Panchal is also a work of literature. Okay, great, great work of literature. Uh, he takes from them. They do not, I don't know, I mean, of course, we see only in subtitles. I don't think they take the texts, the literary text and uh, use words in the literary text. That's the sense I've got. So, my whole sense is that these are the three things. And fiction is the thing which lends itself most, uh, most, uh, uh, shall we say, most suitably to the thing of adaptation. Because my entire process of my, my involvement in cinema is as a critic and a theorist. So what I would pick, I mean, I haven't thought about that really. Okay, uh, you mentioned about Chetan Bhagat. So let me just sort of take that a little further. Now, when he wrote his first book, Five Point Something, he did not have, I mean, he, he wrote it as a book. He did not think about it as a movie. Uh, later on, when that movie really became very successful as, as Three Idiots, subsequently he started writing more for cinema. So his subsequent books, if you see, they are virtually written as if uh, they are going to be adapted or they are going to become films. How was the writing different when he first wrote and the uh, subsequent ones? Can you just sort of uh, okay. tell the audience? No, my, my, my sense of Chetan Bhagat is writing novels, right? You can't adapt novels for the um, uh, mainstream film. The mainstream is, is, all narration in the mainstream film is in the heroic mode, okay? So the question is when you take five point, some, five point someone, that character, the equivalent of Rancho in five point someone is an ordinary guy, he's a college student. Here Rancho is given some uh, superhuman qualities. I mean, he's a genius, he's this. 
so this entire thing of larger than life characteristic which comes in uh, which comes in uh, the uh, which comes into the mainstream film is not to be found in a novel the novel is much closer to middle cinema it's much closer to art cinema so it's very much easier for, to adapt a novel as art cinema whereas the entire thing all all mainstream film characters are epic characters okay like like there are there are certain like you can have there are there are certain emotions which are possible for epic characters you can have anger you can have hatred okay you can have anger you can't have resentment you can have hatred you you mean the the, the emotions have to be very very large okay and uh, these uh, very uh, jealousy these are the strong epic uh, qualities that people uh, that people exhibit in uh, stories whereas you know nervousness see fear and nervousness fear would be a uh, quality of an epic novel right nervousness would be from a novel i don't know if you okay, catch my meaning okay these these epic so the question is hindi movies or let's say the mainstream films don't have nervousness okay it's 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 a novel for, it's a, it's a, it's a characteristic from a novel where you have fear there right so the epic quality so the question is how this i saw read this last one also half girlfriend i read that i don't actually see you know that he is making much of he is still writing novels he is writing novels for a literate public he is not uh, adapting in any way i think his uh, that finally when it's made into something see for example if you take uh, a lot of kind of hindi movies and popular films now are being made with uh, you know novels but they are not for example something like um, lunch box that is not done in the epic mode that's in the in the novel mode it's a short story mode right he's an ordinary human being somebody asked me you know about rajkumar whether rajkumar ever played the part of an ordinary man i said no he's played the part of a poor man but never an ordinary man it's not possible for a heroic actor to play the ordinary man okay so i still think that sachin bagat is writing novels in the novelistic mode but uh, when they adapt him they have to make they have to make the ordinary college student into a rancho who's an epic kind of heroic figure bardwaj let me uh, you know very often when you talk about movies to people which are based on existing novels they are responsible the oh the movie was okay but the novels were, was much better a lot of this derives from the fact that you know novels end up or books or literary works they end up saying so much more and have so much more flexibility as compared to a movie okay so let's say for example the uh, literary work may be 400 pages whereas a typical screenplay will be about 120 pages so what according to you are the elements which get thrown out and as a filmmaker what does a filmmaker focus on when he chooses a literary work and what does it take when he sort of has to use that in the screenplay can you just sort of talk a little about that uh, it's actually it's a quite a large topic to talk about but uh i think like see l l l i think we'll have to separate this into different kinds of novels uh supposing you take something like the age of innocence which is edith wharton's novel and which was adapted by martin scorsese uh so he wanted to make a literary kind of film so he had uh, a voice over like like you said reading out edith wharton's actual prose uh, over over the scenes of things so the thing is uh what one might have visualized uh, while reading the novel you get that plus the prose itself so it kind of acts like a uh you know i i know people who have actually read this when they when the, when essay is needed on a, on a on a on a uh, who have seen this when an essay is needed on a particular film kind of thing but but when you're talking about bigger novels um uh, hitchcock once said that you know more than novels uh, the short story is really ideal for uh, a, a a film uh because it 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 kind of allows you gives you a plot but it doesn't dictate everything from start to finish and it gives you a semblance of where to take the narrative and then you can make it your own this is a very valid point that bardwaj has made that you know short stories are far easier to convert into a film because they allow far more flexibility to the filmmaker also to use his own interpretation vision and bring about elements that he wants to bring develop characters the way he wants to do as against taking a novel or taking a literary work which is maybe 3 400 pages and then trying to condense it 
because in the process there are a lot of things that you have to eliminate and remove and you first have to as uh, uh, Raghavendra also mentioned you have to know what is the story in that and then take the story and then develop that story into the screenplay so therefore those are the challenges sorry continue no uh, and also I just to address the point that you made the three four hundred pages of a novel are not exactly comparable with the hundred hundred twenty pages of a screenplay because a the format of writing is very different if one took a screenplay and adapted it like a literary work saying he said this he said this, you know you would actually get probably three four hundred works because and the other thing is also that the it contains a lot of instructions that are not there which are more descriptive in the novel like you know he enters the room would be he entered the room you know in a novel so the, i think it's 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 the the, the that the number of pages is not as important as you know what somebody takes and, and does not take um, but i think what um, uh, you know to to kind of go back to that whole point about uh, you know what what a filmmaker does when, like in an age of innocence is one kind of novel the when you take the harry potter kind of novels uh, the first two were very, very close to the uh, to the books themselves, like which which kind of made the films uh, just like somebody reimagined them in a new medium. Whereas book uh, three onwards, when Alfonso Suarón uh, came on to the to the picture with Prisoner of Azkaban, you get a very cinematic quality, which kind of actually exists in a parallel dimension to the books themselves. So you have inventions that are not there in the in the book. You have things that in the book that are not there in the movie. So there's a lot of very, so they literally took the, the core idea and made cinema out of it, which is why the, the subsequent Harry Potter films are, are, are kind of, they have a lot of, they're not exactly Rowling's uh, novels, they're, they're Rowling's and the screenwriter's uh, movies. So that, that's another way to go about doing this. True. Sanjay, would you like to add to this? Yeah, as I said, I come from the other side, um, as a writer and an occasional filmmaker when I see there's something that really fascinates me and documentary filmmaking has neither the budget nor the time in which to explore a subject in great detail. Uh, but I think that what has happened for me is over the years and the, the recent movie on the documentary made on Mizoram is a case in point. It's actually fed into the narrative that I'm writing. I'm writing a new book on the region and it is actually the research that has gone into the film is actually a very critical part of the Mizoro story in the book. So it works both ways and in, in a process I produce films, I raise the money and I occasionally write scripts and uh, the screenplay uh, and one must in these situations respect the specializations and the knowledge of the director and the cinematographer that we do, that is a space we must professionally respect and honor. One of the reasons why I find uh, a lot of uh, filmmakers choose existing novels and works is also on, uh, uh, for reasons of uh, copyright. So a lot of works which are already in public domain, take Shakespeare for example, I mean they are wonderful works and they are available in public domain. So therefore you have Shakespeare versions made almost in every country. I mean, we've made our own Haider and Omkara and uh, you name it, I mean, we've done at least five or six uh, of the Shakespeare plays in mainstream uh, Hindi Brand. cinema. And uh, yeah, exactly. So therefore, public domain allows you a lot more flexibility. So, uh, would you like to sort of comment uh, on that, Bhadwaj? On, on public domain? Yeah, that because it's easy, accessible material, that here's a story which is well written, well structured, which is already well known among people, it has a brand equity and it's available free of cost, so why not pick it up from there? So again, to, to quote what, Rag I mean to uh, refer back to what Raghavendra said, it is the brand thing. But I would also say it's also how popular a novel is. For instance, you, one thought that uh, Lolita was almost unfilmable, you know, because A, the subject matter itself and B, because it is, it is such a literary novel, the, the prose is you, you can actually taste the prose, you know, it's, it's such a ripely written novel. But Kubrick managed to do something, um, I think it's an actually very underrated film of his. What he does is, if you, if you remember the opening of the film, it, it's just this extraordinarily romantic piano music that's playing over the opening credits, and which already, which hints at the, that the kind of romance to come. And you just see a woman's feet, 
and uh, there are swabs of cotton between the, the toes and a man is painting her nails. Uh, you don't see the woman, you don't see the man. So the frame just has the foot and, and the hand. So the, the painting is going on. This to me summarizes the entire thing to follow, the slavish devotion of, of what is to follow, the, the obsession, the care with which he's painting the nails. Is, it's, it's kind of borderline, you know, that obsession. Uh, and, it, and you don't have to start the novel with uh, Lolita, Light of My Life, Fire of My Loins, which is, exa which is what Nabokov said. But if you take Adrian Lyne's version of Lolita, which was released in, I think, 97 or, or sometime that time, you actually have the same, the, the, the words of the novel get repeated in the, uh, uh, in the opening, but it's this drunken man who's swerving on in, in along a road and, and driving with a, with a gun beside him, and he's repeating Nabokov's words. So I think both are very powerful uh, ways, and, and to, the, the point I'm trying to make is that it's, it's, it's about whether it's, it's not, I don't think it's so much about public domain or whatever it is, it is about what the director, how much of his sensibility he allows to remain in the film despite the fact that the author has already put a very strong sensibility into the novel, which is why I take a very popular novel like Lolita. Well, uh, we've already been hinted that we have to wind up. So therefore, let me just come to uh, Raghavendra one uh, last thing that what should our writers do so that more of Indian works get, uh, you know, converted into cinema worldwide. We've had, uh, you know, examples like say Namesake or uh, Slumdog Millionaire or Gandhi, some of uh, the Indian works that have actually been picked up and uh, made into international uh, films. Uh, of course, there are many examples of Indian uh, novels being converted into Indian films, but I'm talking about our literary works going internationally, including our mythologies and so on. As a critic, what, uh, what are your suggestions to our young writers and future writers as to what they should be doing so that their stories can be seen globally? If you have, I've got a suggestion here. If you want your novels, your writing to be filmed internationally, you have to become a native informant. I don't know if you're familiar with the term. <laughs> a native informant is a person who reports on his old, own culture to a foreign public. That's what you're required to do. Because if you look at it, I mean, if you look at something like Slumdog Millionaire, you look at Slumdog Millionaire, it's not an Indian film at all, right? So it's, it's basically, a lot of the Iranians have hit upon this. If you look at Asghar Farhadi, you look at all these people, they, they use their own culture, okay? They, a certain, a certain well-known habit of that culture, a well-known thing, like, like multiple marriages, polygamy, is placed as a kind of mystery at the end, okay? So the question is, or the thing is, what, what they do is, it's, it's a, you know, they are, they are making films for a, for a public which doesn't know the social habits of Iranians, right? So the question is that finally a, a, a crucial element is brought into the film and then, you know, oh, Iranians do this, this is the way they treat, uh, you know, so it comes out as a kind of mystery. They seem to have perfected that. But you know, there is a lot of money in international productions, there's not much money, that, that, so... You have to, I think, you know, you... Okay, you, yeah. any questions from the audience? Yeah, please. Um, can somebody give a mic? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, I'm just, that was really interesting. I'm just wondering, in your film, doing an analysis, have you noticed any traits which are different across different national cinema versus how movies are adapted from novels? Whether specific to Hollywood or Hollywood or any other national cinema? National cinemas are very different in their uh, approaches, you know. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't see... My, I mean... Um, the, 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 see, for example, I, I, I don't know very specifically to... Uh, specifically to adaptations. Have you seen this movie called... Um, uh, this... Uh, the, the Dinner Game, French movie? Right? It's a French comedy. It's been made into American thing, I think, Dinner for Schmucks or something. It's been made into a Hindi movie called uh, Beja Fry. They're all, you know, completely different in the sense, you know, see the basic thing in the French thing is, the French uh, approach is that everybody is a citizen, right? There's some equality between citizens. America, the thing is, uh, their approach is that the individual is very important. You can't laugh at uh, people who are comical. Okay, this political correctness. Here you have this thing of hierarchy, Indian thing is hierarchy. So they adopt, I mean, it's, 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 it'll go on too long if I answer this question, but the point is, 
each culture has a certain uh, distinct characteristic, okay? Like you could say generally that French actors are like American character actors, okay? You don't have these stars in French cinema, right? That, 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 that heroic individual whom, whom one projects oneself is not there in French cinema. I won't uh, expand upon this, it will take too much time. Thank you so much. Yeah, please, please stand up. I see there are a lot of, but we don't have time, so I'll take only two more questions, yeah. Okay. So it seems like we're talking yeah, about in oh good, okay. It seems like we've talked about Indian movies from the point of view of Hindi movies, but if I look at uh Kannada movies or Tamil movies, there have been a lot of novels, even yeah, Kya over I mean uh, we have had such wonderful have, yeah, yeah, been see, adapted to movies. Visaranai, uh, Visaranai from Sujata's various true, true, books, true, true, true. I mean, it's just, yeah, and Absolutely. all of the amazing Kannada literature that is made into movies. So if you forget about Bollywood at all for a second, okay, now if you were to have this conversation, what would you say? No, I think the same would apply. I mean, uh, even in regional cinema, and I, I just did mention to you that I did uh, a couple of regional, uh, including... Uh, uh, you know, works of uh, Tagore, which are essentially short stories in Bengali, uh, which were made into feature films. And uh, uh, as uh, Bhatwaj rightly said, it was easier to take on short stories, well-known uh, short stories, and convert them into uh, novels, uh, into movies, uh, rather than taking some really big literary work. So today, for example, if you have to make a feature film on either Ramayana or Mahabharat, it becomes a nightmare because you don't know what to eliminate and what, uh, what storyline to take because the format is that fine, you have about a two hour slot in which you have to say something which uh, otherwise is uh, written over, uh, you know, uh, it runs into sort of uh, thousands of pages. So those are the challenges that exist and that is true even in regional uh, works. So uh, I would say that the, the, the challenges remain the same. The adaptation of course depends on… They're similar, uh, they're similar I think, not, not very different. I don't think they're very different. Okay, yeah. Sir, uh, would you consider the adaptations more successful when the author collaborates with the director? You know, I'm thinking very specifically of two Indian instances where Narayan was very unhappy with the adaptation of Guide, whereas Professor Anthmurti has very often claimed that the way Gadashtada was done by Kasravali, he was very happy with it. No, so this does is, that make a this difference? This is, you know, when you take living uh, authors, it becomes a big challenge. You know, I can tell you from my own experience, uh, when I wanted to make a uh, train to Pakistan, my first nightmare was getting the rights from Kushwan Singh. Kushwan Singh wouldn't meet me for quite some time and finally gave me an appointment and called me in, uh, to Calcutta. Now he was Delhi based and I kept visiting Delhi often but he didn't give me an appointment to meet him in uh, Delhi. He asked me to meet him in Calcutta. So I f uh, flew down to Calcutta, he was staying in the Taj Bengal there and I went and met him. And uh, after some uh, hardly about one minute of niceties, he straight away, uh, you know, told me, so what do you want? And I said, uh, you know, I'm looking for the rights of uh, uh, Train to Pakistan to make it into a fil film. He said, uh, oh, the right, he just for half a minute, he kept quiet and then he said, the rights are with my son-in-law and you'll have to approach him and so go and meet him in Delhi. I was like furious inside that, uh, you know, I came all the way to Calcutta because you asked me to come to Calcutta to discuss the rights and all you're telling me is that uh, the rights are with the son-in-law in, -law in uh, Delhi. Then I went back uh, to Delhi, met his son-in-law and his son-in-law said, uh, you have to talk to Kushwan Singh uh, for the rights. So I had to chase Kushwan Singh quite a bit to get those rights. Finally, after getting the rights, my big worry was that how much of, uh, you know, how much he'd want to say in, while the film was being made. Now, Pamela Rooks was directing the film for me. And uh, as we progressed, luckily, Kushwan Singh did not sort of once call us or uh, tell us anything. Uh, he was wonderful and uh, we had no problems at all. And then when I invited him for uh, the, you know, the premiere of the film, the premiere of the film was actually when we were celebrating our 50 years of independence, that film was... Uh, the slotted as the uh, for uh, uh, premiere and we were showing it simultaneously in theater and on Star TV uh, simultaneously. It was the first Indian film that was simulcast in theaters as well as on television. And I was so nervous because Kushwan Singh was our chief guest and I said after the film he might just tear me apart. And uh, we were having a party that night also. 
I was so relieved when after seeing the film, Kushwan Singh said, the film is better than the book. I mean, I, would, I never expected that compliment, to be honest. But it's, it's very difficult because when you're, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, living uh, authors, they have their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, the book is theirs, the creative work is theirs. And then they see something done completely different by somebody else. It's only natural that there would be conflict. Now, the film is a medium which, one is that the film is written, uh, is a work of many people. Unlike a writing work, which is a single person's vision, imagination, everything, that's not the case with film. Cinema is so many people contributing. There's a cinematographer, there's a writer, there's a music uh, director, there's background score, there is a costume, there are umpteen number of departments that are working into creating a work. So it's a composite work, it's not a one person's work. So it's bound to be significantly different than uh, 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 a written work. And that's exactly the worry when, uh, so I'm not surprised that, uh, you know, uh, on the issue of guide, the, you know, he was not happy with uh, uh, the film. And this is more than likely. And therefore, taking up uh, existing authors is difficult. Therefore, Chetan Bhagat is that way much better because he's virtually writing, knowing very well that he's writing for a, a, a cinema and he knows that somebody else is going to give that vision and twist and turn and whatever. So yes, there, uh, uh, so it probably, you know, those who are just writing for that, so even if you probably look at uh, J.K. Rowling's uh, later Harry Potter books, they were very well, they were written with knowing pretty well that these would be converted into cinema by somebody else and uh, that they will be fitted into a two-hour uh, format and a slot, so they would definitely be different and they would have to have some continuity with the earlier works and so on. So yeah, those, those uh, uh, you know, limiting uh, parameters are there. Just to add to that, I think uh, with the, the specific case of uh, Arkenar and Guide, I think one of the things that happened was also that, I mean, I've read his objections to the film. I don't think he was very comfortable with the narrative language of mainstream uh, Indian cinema. I think that was one main thing because he, once you, once you uh, see a cad of a hero become a kind of a heroic kind of a hero, uh, your whole story's tone is changed. So I, what I would have done is I would have asked Vijay Anand to say, okay, what, how are you planning to treat this hero? What are you planning to do? And then if I was not comfortable with it, maybe I would have given it to an arty kind of director. Of course, at, in that 1965 time, there were not that many arty, uh, you know, kind of filmmakers. We had only a mainstream kind of cinema. But I think his objections were main, more on that, you know, because I find the movie to be an excellent, com uh, you know, adaptation of a book. The, that being said, like Jesse said, it's also uh, what do you expect in an adaptation? If if you want, you know, one way to say is is the book is are you, I mean, if you expect fidelity in an in a, in a, in a, I'm not saying it's wrong to expect that, but if that is your criterion for evaluating the success of a, of an adaptation, then you're probably going to have a different uh, uh, response to a to a work, a film, than you are if you're just going to say, let me see how this exists as a companion piece to the book. I feel, find Guide is a good companion piece to the book. I don't think it's, it's a very accurate uh, adaptation as, as such. So. No, I just want to go back to the whole uh, regional film, uh, language, language film. I'm more familiar with Assamese and uh, to a degree Bangla. Uh, but you take uh, the f like Rudali or uh, the films that uh, Jahanu has has made over the past decade decades, and what strikes you about them is the seamless adaptation of both living and uh, non-living authors to the Assamese way of life. The you know it's it's a very humanistic approach that he that he takes, and. I've seen people in the audience, and I can include myself, you know what the person is going to say because the, it is such a, a comfort zone that uh, he captures, you know, at least in parts of the movies. At other parts, it's very, very powerful and striking and very different. So I think that is also something that uh, figures in uh, the, the narrative of the, of the filmmaker, of the director is how does he capture the nuance, the cultural nuance that will make uh, uh, somebody in the audience say, yes, this is exactly what I was thinking. In fact, on this, I might mention that uh, one book which is uh, waiting to be made into a film is Shantaram. And uh, 
there have been so many directors, uh, you know, who were hired, including Meera Nair, and I was talking to her at one point in time when she was engaged uh, to make the film. And uh, the main concern on such a thing is that those of you who have read Shantaram know what a voluminous uh, work it is. Now, to convert that into a film, I mean, unless the vision of the director who is to make it and the vision of the other uh, people who are involved, including the producers, uh, sort of matches, it is very difficult to sort of, uh, so getting the screenplay itself first approved is a nightmare. I mean, that's one of the reasons probably why that film is actually, that book has uh, not yet become a novel. Uh, right. this, this, uh, this brings us to this uh, thing about novel and short story. See, this multiple strand thing can't be done in a film at all, right? It can't be done. The short story has got this three-act structure already, okay? So you don't have to do much. So what do you do with War and Peace? What is the three-act structure of War and Peace? You can't do anything, right? So that, that is why there's that, that, that something like a massive... Whereas Harry Potter works perfectly, though it's large, it's that single strand thing. Any other questions here, please? Actually, there are some... Uh, just... Yeah. No, the, no the, uh, I mean, the question is, uh, novels are being made into movies, why aren't movies... Uh, no. there? No, yeah, successful there are, there are movies there are, so are converted you, you do to find novels. novelizations. There are there. There are it's not, the same scale. Not, not in the same scale. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but I think it's also because. No, if you have a successful movie, there are times when those are converted into literary works. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, the, 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 the amount. The amount of see the, the visual space occupies too much. You know, so when you convert it into verbal space it automatically gets condensed. So what happens is it's, uh, it becomes, you know, very fragile, very flimsy and not much uh, content. It's a problem. But I think that's why you have fan fiction, so. <laughs> okay, we have time just for one yeah. last question. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this is, uh, if you take Gone with the Wind, the whole book, most of the pages are describing the atmosphere or the situation which can be taken into a shot. While one of the Harry Potter book which got made into the movie was more about the Quidditch match while the book had so much more to offer. Or for that matter, Da Vinci Code. When you read the book and when you see the movie, you somehow feel that there are many parts of the book which has got left out. So is it very important to stick to the book or at some time you just make it a movie which is a two-hour movie and which is more popular and will go with the masses? So where do you draw the line? That is the director's vision. Finally, you know, eh everybody will have their own different interpretation. You will just take the key thing that the novel is trying to say and then see how that and the characters, the key characters in that, how do you take the key characters, how do you take the key storyline and then how do you develop it into a screenplay that shows some level of fidelity because, you know, fidelity is just not possible in uh, these cases, but brings out the... Uh, feel, uh, you know, it's like uh, almost uh, uh, like a Renoir painting where uh, you don't see the details but you get the, uh, the impression is there of... Uh, but sometimes you lose the essence of the book. Like for example, that, Shantaram, you're going to face the problem. You're going to face, but that is bound to be and each one will have their own different interpretations. So depending on which director you take, and what your budget is, is bound to be different. So that you have to live with. I mean, there, and there are some novels that can lend themselves to multiple uh, uh, sort of, uh, which is why on Shakespeare, uh, whether it's a Hamlet or Othello or whatever, you find so many versions made. And uh, each one has their own interpretation, own different uh, viewpoint. And uh, so that's a good thing, in fact. <laughs> <laughs>